and so that, no choice, oh yeah, and. <laughs> My name's Holly Bourne and I'm a reviewer and inspector for QAI and my specialty is livestock. So I'd like to talk a little bit today about understanding healthcare for organic livestock. For organic livestock, the foundation of healthcare is always going to be prevention. We ask producers to describe in their organic system plan what their plan is for preventing illness in their animals. Things like sanitation, not crowding the animals, providing them a good, good diet, opportunity to exercise, pretty much everything that will, would make a human healthy will also make an animal healthy. And a very important part of that prevention plan is the use of vaccines to prevent illness and vaccines are allowed under the uh, National Organic Standards. But sometimes the best plans can still fail and the animal may still get ill. And in that case, you'll want to look at what kind of medical treatments are you allowed to use. Before we get into that, I want to differentiate between what is a medical treatment and what is not because there are a lot of products such as microbials or vitamins that can be used either to treat an illness or as a feed additive and they're both reviewed very differently and they both have very different requirements so it's really important to be able to know which is which. The way that we would determine if, it's a, if a product is a medical treatment is that it needs to be used to treat a specific illness, typically going to be used for a short period of time just to treat that illness, whereas the same product used as a feed additive, it's something that you're going to feed routinely, probably every day, and it's meant to promote the general health of the animal, but not to treat any specific illness. So assuming the product is, is indeed a medical treatment, then we would proceed to look at, first of all, the product has to be, as a whole, be produced without the use of genetically modified organisms. If it passes that test, then we have to look at the active and inactive ingredients. Now, the active ingredients, they have to either be an approved non-synthetic material, or they have to be an approved synthetic material, which appears on the National Organic Standards at 205-603. 603A refers to internal treatments and 603B refers to external treatments. Assuming the active passes, uh, passes that test, then we go and we want to look at the inactive ingredients and otherwise we refer the, to those as excipients. Excipients are things like colors, flavors, lubricants, carriers, and so on. Um, and to be able to, for the excipients to qualify, they need to be approved by the FDA either as generally recognized as safe, as a food additive, either a direct or indirect food additive, or approved by the FDA as a new animal drug application or a new drug application. There are some times when even the use of approved synthetic medications as we've discussed, is still not enough to, um, to get the animal back to health. And in that case, the National Organic Standards require that any needed treatment be given to um, restore the animal to health. And so there are pretty much treatments that are gonna be prohibited is everything that doesn't meet the criteria that we just talked about. However, the organic standards require that if an animal needs it, that you, you, that you give even a prohibited medical treatment. And typically that, what that would be is antibiotics. And that will knock the animal out of organic status. However, you're not allowed to withhold any needed treatment just to keep the animal organic. You need to do whatever you need to do to get that animal back healthy and good condition. And if it's received antibiotics or a prohibited treatment, then typically it would need to leave your organic herd or flock but the main thing to remember is that always you know your health the livestock come first 